Okay, hi everyone. Um, this is the, I guess we're the third meeting? Either way, this is the introduction to statistical learning um, with applications in Python book club for the RPDS online learning community. Today, I'm gonna be going over the applied exercises for chapter two. Um, see, ya. let me go to the code. I didn't like render it in the book, but I'll just go straight from the code. Okay, so for the first, um, and yeah, some of the first things I did, I don't know whether or not it's right. <laughs> okay, um, called the library reticulate. And this part I think is to make sure that the directory is like, yeah, is like for the book down. And then for Python, I imported NumPy as NP. Um, I don't know if I needed this line because it was me trying to figure out how to plot the plots, but it didn't seem to work. Um, and from matplotlib.pyplot, I imported subplots. And then I imported pandas as PD. So for the first exercise, um, this exercise relates to the college data set which can be found in the file college.csv on the book website. And it contains a number of variables of 777 different universities and colleges in the US. Um, and as far as finding that data, so you would go to the books website where the home is statlearning.com. And then if you go to resources for ISO Python, then they have like all the data sets um, and you could download them as like either the CSV or .dat or .data, I guess, or they also have zip files. Um, and let me see what else, embarrassing seven. And yeah, so I also have those, oh, that's not, I also have the Excel files for those open so we can look at those quickly too. So yeah, so for this one with the college data set, it is, I think this is 70, 777 rows or yeah, rows and let's see with different universities. And then we have um, these variables here, which are private, whether it's a public or private school, apps, which is the number of applications received, accept the number of applicant, applicants accepted, enroll, which is the number of new students enrolled, top 10% or top 10 perk, which is new students from top 10% of high school class and top 25 perk, which is new students from the top 25% of high school class, F dot undergrad, which is the number of full-time undergraduates, P dot undergrad, which is the number of part-time undergraduates, out state, which is the out of state tuition, room dot board, which is room and board costs, books, which is the estimated book costs, personal, which is the estimated personal spending, PhD, which is the percent of faculty with PhDs, terminal, which is the percent of faculty with terminal degrees, um, SRF ratio, which is student to faculty ratio, um, perk.alumni, which is percent of alumni who donate, expend, which is the instructional expenditure per student, and grad.rate, which is the graduation rate. Um, before reading the data into Python, it can be viewed in Excel or a text editor. Um, so yeah. Sampling question. Okay, so in the chat, Lucy asks, will we also cover the conceptual exercises? Um, we can, I thought we were focusing on the applied, but I guess we can go back to those after if there's time. Um, yeah, so again, this is the data set um, for the colleges and you see all of the, all of the variables are numeric. Um, well, actually, I guess it's a private, they're numeric. Okay, so, okay, so we use, pd.read underscore csv, use the pd.read underscore csv function to read the data into Python and call the loaded data college. 
uh, make sure that you have the directory set to the correct location of the data. So I put college is equal to pd.read underscore csv. Um, and the data, I have it in this directory in a folder called ISLP data. And then, so I called that CSV and then called college. And again, it's 777 rows by 19 columns. And if we look at the, okay, look at the data used in the notebook to create by creating and running a new cell with just the code college in it. And you should notice that the first column is just the name of each university in a column named something like unnamed zero. And we don't really want pandas to treat this as the data. However, it may be handy to have these names for later. And uh, we'll try the following commands and similarly look at the resulting data frames. By the way, if anyone knows, I don't, I wasn't sure how to see the entirety of the data set. I don't know if I can do the same thing as in, well, I guess I could just do some R code perhaps. Like what would be like the R, the Python version to like view the entire data set, like within the IDE, if anyone knows. Yeah. Uh, Lydia, this is Ricardo. Uh, yes, there is an option for. Uh, I have to look at. I have to look it up. But there is an option for telling. Uh, you know, t telling the the Jupyter notebook, at yeah. least in the Jupyter notebook, telling it. Yeah, that that's the one. That's uh, Ulan is telling it uh, to okay. control the maximum rows display and also the maximum columns. Two. Okay. Okay, but that that's the one in the chat that. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll and I could it. just. Yeah. Let me see. Can I just put it at the top and it'll run for all of it, or do I need to do it for each thing? Yeah, you usually you you do it. You know, when you are importing the libraries, uh, mm -hmm. you set up, you know, some of the parameters if you want warnings, etc. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay, looks like I think it just gave me all of the okay, I don't want all of the... Okay, that did not do what I thought it would do. I'm not sure that's working how I thought it would. It's, it's because you already ran it once in the kernel. So for this one, that's how it's going to remember it. Yeah, you have to restart the kernel, you know, to get the new, uh, the new settings. What does that mean? I don't know. I've never used Reticulate before. Is okay. like how do I reset the and yeah, you you have to restart, you know, the, the session. Okay, so like exit the book, exit the project. Uh I think it's in session. You're using R Studio, right? Yeah. Yeah, session uh, restart R. Okay. Yep. I've actually never used that before, so thank you. Yeah, when, when you're using a <laughs> Jupyter notebook, uh, mm -hmm. you do just restart. There's a, you know, bottom button okay. there. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, and comment then, out the rows one before you run it. Which one? Uh, if you said you didn't want all the rows, right? So maybe comment yeah. that out before you run that chunk. Okay, cool. Okay, now it shows me everything. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so there it shows me all the columns where it's um, private apps except enroll 
Perfect. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so it shows me the 19 columns. Let me see. Yeah, this first one unnamed is the universities. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so look at the data used in the notebook. Um, let's see, we really don't want pandas to treat this as data. However, it may be handy to have the names after. So we'll try the following commands to similarly look at the related the resulting data sets. Okay. So this one where it's index equal to column zero. And then so that one pretty much looks the same where it's oh no, it's not the same. It only specifies Yeah, what 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 you're cards. saying there in that first you know instruction mm -hmm. is that the column zero, which is the first mm -hmm. column, really. Okay, yeah. you know, in Python, everything starts with zero. Yeah. <laughs> zero base, yeah. So what you're saying is that that's going to be the index for your yeah. well, for your rows. Okay, mm -hmm. and you you always in the Pandas data frame, you always need an index. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, when you don't do anything, I know it, it will it will uh, it, it will get you, you know the numeric, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, index. But there, you're saying that index, the the column zero is going to be your index. In this case, mm -hmm. that's college, the college name. Mm -hmm. Meaning, index meaning it doesn't like count it. You're saying. Uh it's a. Let's let let's say that it's like a phantom column. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that works. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a phantom column that you know mm -hmm. you always need an index if you yeah. uh, you know go in deep about you know how this panda data frame is structured yeah. uh it says that you know that there's always an index mm -hmm. uh you can set the index or it's going to be given to you okay yeah. one way or the other you have to have an index okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah for example so yeah, you can you can check this later uh mm -hmm. but if you do let's say uh uh, I think it's college, right? You know, the, mm -hmm. the, the name of the, the data frame, college two. Yeah. And then you yeah. say dot reset index. Mm. Okay. What it's going mm -hmm. to do is that that index that you have, you know, yeah. as college is going to be converted to a column. And then you're going to mm -hmm. have a numeric index. Okay. Mm. Oh, so okay. you can you can manipulate because indexes are useful, especially when you are uh, merging uh, different mm -hmm. uh, data frames. Uh, index mm. are, are are useful for that. Okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just uh, you know, le learning new stuff <laughs> with Python. Yeah, I'm still very new to Python. So yeah. I figured chapter chapter two is probably the easiest <laughs> to do right. later on. Yeah, still not easy, but easiest <laughs> for me to present. Probably, but try, try later. Okay, try college yeah. two or whatever college you know you have in the data frame. Try that reset index, mm. okay, mm -hmm. and you will you know convert that index. You will convert to a column, and then you'll get mm. the numeric index. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> but, yeah. So then they have the other one, which is college three, which is equal to college dot rename, um, where unnamed. Yeah, honestly, it's very hard for me to explain any of this with not understanding Python. But that's what that one looks like. And then it has the 19 columns. So I'm guessing, like, is this one meaning that it didn't, like, it gave me an index, you're kind of saying? Like, that first, that extra column? Correct. Yeah, because oh. there, you are naming that on name zero as a column. Yeah. You are mm. renaming it as college. Mm. And because that's a column, then you're going to get a numeric index. Mm. The same thing is okay. going to happen if you try a reset reset index. The same yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and then this one. And then this one again has the eighteen rows. And yeah, so we renamed. So they did. So this one they set the index, and then instead of it being unnamed, they named it college. If I'm getting it right. Correct. Yeah. 
Uh, right. they, they are, Sweet. you're setting the index as college, but also you're naming the index too. Oh, okay. Okay, very, very cool. index uh, underscore column mm -hmm. equals zero. Uh, you, mm -hmm. you don't you didn't name the index. Mm. Okay. okay, very cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. And then, okay, so this has used the first column in the file as an index for the data frame. And this means that Pandas has given each row a name corresponding to the appropriate university. And now you should see that the first data file column is private. Um, note that the names of the colleges appear on the left of the table. And we also introduce a new Python object above a dictionary, which is specified by key, key what was it, comma value pairs. And keep your modified version of the data with the following where it's college is equal to college three. And that one's just defining it um, versus showing it. But actually, let me show college. Yeah, so now the original college we called in the very first one is now like it looks different because we're setting it equal to college three. And then the next one is to use the describe method um, to produce a numerical summary of the variables in the data set. So when I do college describe, it gives us like the count, mean, standard deviation, min, um, inner quartile range, and max of each of the variables. Okay. And then, so this part I could not do. I I have no idea how to get the plots to actually plot. And I'm pretty sure I had the code wrong in general, but like even I was trying, even when I was trying the, um, the examples from the labs, like which actually has the data properly, I'm assuming, it just won't like, oh, and I added that. It won't show, so I'm not sure. What the what is going on? Even like let me see. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone knows how to get the graphs to show, but like I get this is like the message I get whenever I try and plot anything. It just shows me matplotlib dot lines line 2d object at this and I have no idea what that means so I didn't do any of the graphs because I could not get them to work oh plot show I yeah I tried that like I tried that because let me see chose the one yeah so I tried that in like this one assuming let me see and horsepower is undefined. I'm pretty sure I loaded all of it. Okay. Uh, uh, Lydia, mm -hmm. did you import the matplotlib as a PLT? Um. I tried doing that. Yeah, I think I ran this already. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because then PLT, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying it earlier. I don't know. Yeah, because you're using subplot, you know, to try to mm -hmm. get different plots in the same in the same screen. Uh for the most part, this is, yeah, I made minor changes, but this is the lab straight out of like what they provided. Right. Okay, but if you're plotting here, you're plotting horsepower as X, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. MPT as, as Y. And mm -hmm. then the, you're getting the, the observations, you know, the, the, the styling as O. So probably mm -hmm. what you need is really, uh, PLT instead of the subplots, uh, you know, just try to comment that 
let's let's try that okay comment that and then change x to plt Hmm. Horsepower is not defined. Okay, horsepower is not defined. So you need um you need to define the data frame. Okay. Did it not yeah. be this? Or do I have to I think, it? I think, like I think already has data? Sorry. So in the plotting, can we just give the data set as auto X and Y as horsepower and MPG because yeah, or should it be like auto and then in brackets horsepower right. kind of like Correct. pointing to that series? Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. yes you have to do it in quotes. Yeah. Uh, brackets single and quote and quotes. Okay. Yeah. Like horsepower uh, and MPG. You're saying. Uh huh. The brackets and then also horsepower make sure that it's in brackets and quotes yeah okay. let's see okay. how uh, if that works there you Sweet. go Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah yeah okay yeah so, that, there's okay, also so in the works. chat uh mm -hmm. Uta, oh. right utam utam uh, uh yeah or you can call me monica yeah yeah okay <laughs> Uh, she's also suggesting that you use uh, Seaborn. I, I, I'm mm. a fan of Seaborn, <laughs> okay? Because I don't have to deal with my plot leave. Sometimes it gets really, you know, uh, <laughs> tricky. Okay. But if you import uh, the Seaborn as SNS, uh, mm. you should be able, you know, to get that uh, plot, a, a very mm. uh, aesthetic plot, and also is 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 very straightforward. So yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, let me try it. Back. Okay, but well, you got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try this. Just. Yeah, apologies for not having finished this <laughs> before. Wait a second. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Or did it finish? Yeah, it's waiting for this one. Uh, oh. So that one didn't, and then do I do the same plot from before? Or, well, either way, we can look at that later. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if the plot. I'm assuming I comment that out. Well, let's see if this works. Hopefully. No. <laughs> that did not work. I'm not sure what's up with that one, but I'll skip that for now and go to some of the other stuff. So yeah, so the next D, E, and F, they include some like more plotting. Um, but F, we create a new quanti qualitative variable called elite by binning top 10% um, variable into two groups based on whether or not the proportion of students come from a top 10% of their high school classes um, exceeds 50%. So this one, it's college. Um, we're creating college elite 
where it's using pandas. Uh, let me see. Hmm? Yes, I want to ask. So I think I raised my hand. Maybe you did not check. I want to ask, like the other plots in which you are, you were showing the example. I discover uh, you you were using the auto. So I would like to ask, what is the meaning? Why do we have to use auto before we can get the plot? Because I know. Over here, why did they use auto? Yes. It's like subsetting the columns, right? It's subsetting horsepower and MPG from the data set, if I'm correct. Or like um, extracting, rather. That's my assumption. But yeah, I'm still learning Python, wow. so I personally can't answer it, but I don't know if anyone Lydia, else Lydia, are you trying to do exercise uh, 8D? Yeah, that was the one I was trying to do. OK, uh, check, because the instruction here is PD mm -hmm. plotting. So it comes from, it oh, comes from Panda. Okay. the function comes from Panda. OK. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hopefully. Yeah, you get the you get the auto complete. <laughs> oh, I didn't even see it. It came up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I need this. Okay. Please do Do I need to? Let do me I need to the... do plot show? Let me check that function because mm. uh, it's kind of new to me. Uh, PD plotting. Okay. Okay, so pages. it seems like colors. Lucy will put something in the chat. It seems like I don't need to have each of them. Ah, okay. Uh, that function, what it's going to give you is a pair plot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the way you have to do it is. Okay, let me see the F. Uh, college. Uh, uh -huh. Yep. I'm going to try what Lucy has in the yeah. chat. See, Oops, see if, if it, that's see not if a bracket. Work. Okay. Yeah. And then should I get rid of the last thing, the O, or do I need that? Um yeah, you can you can do that. Wait, what am I missing? Okay, you have an extra bracket after apps that you have to get rid of it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't yep. realize that. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah. Ah. Get rid get get rid of the of the O. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can try with double brackets to see if it works. I think you don't oh, need the a double brackets. That's yeah. Just... Okay, I got try rid of it. one of the brackets. Try it, yeah. No. Do I should I do plot show? Mm. Yeah. I'm not supposed to, but go ahead. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. do no. anything. Lucio, did you call anything else like to make the plot show or like uh, not really only line 98 uh, I, mm. I didn't run it in a quarter notebook just in a Jupyter one and from that line alone it produced uh, the, the graph the fair plot yeah, yeah. Mm. okay um, yeah because what I'm seeing is that it just has the data frame, the arguments are the data frame, and the other argument is alpha, but it's, it's the opacity. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that should work. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go, go ahead. It's not working for me. I don't know, it just gives me the array. I don't know yeah, if it's like a getting, reticulate thing. Uh, hmm? You're getting all the parameters there. Ta, 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 ta. Yeah. Um, hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. 
Okay, do something when you call map.lib, mm -hmm. do something, you know, add, add, add this instruction. Uh, in the cell that you are calling map.lib, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, ju just uh, uncommented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then add, after that, add uh, the sign of percent matplotlib. Yeah, ju just uh, without space. Matplotlib. Oh, without space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a magic a function. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, space mm -hmm. inline. Inline. In inline? Yeah. In line, yeah. Okay. Yeah, wrong, okay. wrong. See, so sometimes you know. Ooh, okay, no, magic. Okay, yeah, because that that that's from Jupiter Notebook, yeah. Mm. Okay, we we tried it, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes in Jupiter Notebooks, sometimes you need that instruction so that I can show the mm. the, the the plots. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to search on like, was it? Okay, let's just let you know it, it, it worked for him. Uh, oh. Are you using Quarto, uh, Lucio? And I'm using Visual Studio Code and Jupyter Notebook. Okay, yeah. Hmm. You said VS Code, right? VS Code, yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've never used that. <laughs> Yeah, um, it could it could be something because uh the the reticulate is not understanding the hmm. the, the the magic the yeah. magic sometimes is needed for that. Yeah, I feel like Jupiter slash Anaconda looks really well for Python. Uh, yeah. What was that? Oh, I was just saying that uh, Anaconda, especially the Jupyter notebooks, they work pretty well for Python. And mm -hmm. the Anaconda uh, suite also has this thing called Spider, whose right. uh, interface basically looks pretty much like our studio. So people here won't feel mm -hmm. uh, very out of place there, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I used to, uh, I, I used to uh, you know, work in, in Spider. But then I switched to VS Code, and that's where you know I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm living now, <laughs> especially with Python. Okay, you know, with, with R, you know, I'll still use R Studio, but with Python, uh, I, I usually use a v, v, VS Code. But Spider, yeah, uh, uh, she's right. Utam is right. Uh, it's it, the 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 GUI, the GUI is very similar to R Studio. Mm. That's true. <laughs> Hmm. VS Code just comes with like Microsoft Suite. That's Microsoft, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But it's a separate. Uh, it's a separate uh, uh, app. Okay. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think you can get it from the App Store. Uh, you know, uh, Microsoft. Also, you can get it. You know, independently because it runs in okay. many platforms. Okay. Cool. I'll have to check those out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So. Yeah, the graphs are not working very well for me. Um, but yeah, so I went ahead with like F and they have that code. And then they ask you for the value counts of that one. Oh, what happened? This one was working before, I think. Did I not run this? Okay, sweet. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I was afraid. I was like, this stuff was running. Yeah, no, nothing is working. <laughs> nothing is working. <laughs> okay. So this one value counts. I forgot. Do you know? Do you recall what this one does? See how many elite colleges there are. Find out. Excuse me. So I'm, I'm guessing that means there are three elite colleges. I want to say, yeah, but yeah. So again, G is also like plotting, and then I did not continue with um H. But then I went to number nine, and this exercise involves the auto data set studied in the lab, and make sure that the missing values have been removed from the data. So like in the lab, they gave you kind of this code to load it 
where it's auto is equal to pd dot read underscore csv. And again, it's in a folder isop data um, slash auto dot csv. And then to get rid of like the NA values, it's NA underscore values is equal to bracket question mark. Um, and then I called the data set. So yeah, so here we see it, 397 rows with nine columns. Um, I guess it does not do, or rather I'm guessing, so this is the index column it left. Um, okay, so yeah, we have the columns where it's MPG, cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, year, origin, and name. And then, so it, the, the next question is, which predictors are qualitative and which are um, quantitative? Um, so as far as quantitative, I have MPG, displacement, horsepower, weight, and acceleration as the quantitative variables, and then cylinders, year, origin, and name as the qualitative. Um, so next, it asks for what are the range of each qualitative predictor. And we can use the min and max functions from NumPy. So then, yeah, so the code basically you call the, uh, you call the, Lydia. Mm -hmm. yeah, Ricardo here again. Uh, in that uh, question about which ones are quantitative and which are qualitative, Mm -hmm. uh, if you want, also, you can use uh, dot .info, okay, in the, in, you know, after the data frame. Uh-huh. Oh. Dot uh -huh. .info uh, parentheses, yes. Check it out. Okay. I think... Okay, so it's going to be the type. Yeah, it's going mm -hmm. to be the type. So sometimes, because you are saying that some of them are qualitative, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to make sure that the qualitative have the right type. So mm -hmm. for example, right now, name is the only mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. But maybe, you know, some other, you know, could mm -hmm. uh could be uh could be uh you know the type. Uh, mm -hmm. could be qualitative. For example, uh, cylinders could be mm -hmm. also qualitative too, because yeah. cylinders is kind of a label, right? Uh, four yeah. cylinders, six cylinders, eight cylinders. So that could mm -hmm. also be a potential uh, uh, qualitative. Uh, yeah. So, but at least you know what you are saying there is that those are the ones that are read from the from the read uh, underscore mm -hmm. CSV. Those are the mm -hmm. ones that the Pandas is, you know, giving giving you the default uh, type, okay. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's very it's very useful to try to check, you know, if the types are correct. Because if the types are not correct, then the functions are not going to work properly. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So then, say I wanted to set cylinders, year, and origin to an object. Right. How would I necessarily do that? Uh, okay, open another cell, right? Okay, so I, I'm going to give you one example of, you know, one of the observations, you can repeat it later. Mm. Uh, let's say that cylinders, we want to change it to an uh, to an object, mm. but really it's a categorical, okay? Mm. If you come, uh, you know, uh, from R, it's going to be a factor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So categorical, uh, first, you know, let's work with the object and then, you know, later we work with the categorical because the object yeah. is the most, you know, general. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is, uh, 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 type the, type the data frame name, mm -hmm. uh, open brackets, right? Uh, mm -hmm. quotes or, you know, double quotes. And uh, then, double or just uh, like single? Regular. Yeah, if you if you mm -hmm. want singles, fine. I use singles too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. and then cylinders with capital C. Oh, it's cap. I yeah, it's capital C. It has to be. Uh, well, no, no, it has to be the same one as the one that oh, is yeah. 
in the in the in the data frame. Okay. Oh yeah, I think it's that's going underscore. To be, not, right. Or that's, not underscore. But, okay. Yeah, that's going to be equal then after the bracket. Okay, you have to repeat again auto cylinders. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Okay. A dot as type. Hmm. Okay. And then I'm guessing about and then Mm -hmm. oh, 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 I, oh, I, oh, I don't is, uh, is object uh, mm -hmm. without without quotes or object with with quotes. So you can try both to see you know, which one works. One, one of them is going to work. <laughs> wait, so, wait, what do I do after as type? Uh, type? Uh, uh, parentheses. Okay, so it's parentheses. Open parentheses, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Say object. L let's, let's put it in quotes first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, object. Okay. okay. Try. I guess I would still have to. Hmm. Okay. So okay. now Sweet. you have it. <laughs> also, you can run dot okay. info again, and you'll see mm -hmm. that it will change the data type. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Yeah. And. That that's the easiest easiest way to do it. The only thing that if you have a lot of them, okay, yeah. that you want to change, it's going to be a little bit you know cumbersome the quoting. So yeah. there's other ways that you can you know recursively uh, change the type, okay. But yeah, we'll discuss it. You know, we'll have time to discuss all that. <laughs> yeah. Thank okay, you yeah, so, so much. <laughs> but yeah. So then for B, it asks what the range of each of the quantitative predictors are. And using the min and max function from NumPy. So, yeah. So, then, so yeah, basically for each of them, it's kind of going to be call the data frame auto. And then in brackets, you have like the variable name dot either min or max. And then, so I did that for like each of the variables. And um, what did you call it? God, I forgot what you call it. Well, assigned it like a specific name and then I printed it out. So each of them where the min and max miles per gallon is nine, it goes from nine to 46.6. And then for displacement, it's 68 to 455. For horsepower, it's 46 to 230. For weight, it's one. 1,613 to 5,140. And for acceleration, it's 8 to 24.8. And then for C, we're asked, what is the mean and standard deviation of each quantitative predictor? So again, this one where the code is just like calling the data frame, um, extracting the column, this one's MPG, and using the function dot mean. And that's for mean, and then for standard deviation, the function will be dot std. And yeah, so I assign those like a name for each of those variables. So then for this one, for the mean and standard yeah, the mean and standard deviation of miles per gallon are twenty three point five. Um, well, twenty three point five is the mean, and then the standard deviation will be like seven point eight. And then, so basically I did that for the rest of them where for displacement, the mean is 193.5 and the standard deviation is 104.4. And then for horsepower, um, the mean is 104.5 and the standard deviation is 38.5. And for the weight, the mean is 2,900, and 70.3, and the standard deviation is 847.9. And then for acceleration, the mean is 15.6, and the standard deviation is 2.8, basically. And so for this one, for part D, I was not sure how to subset the data, um, so I would need help with that, but then I have it set up as far as reading like being able to say what the 
range mean and standard deviation are? So yeah, for this one, they want you to remove the 10th through the 85th observation and find the range mean and standard deviation for the quantitative predictors. I don't know. I know Lucio, you said you have the code for that one. Do you know like how it would subset or anyone, how it would subset the data to remove the 10th through 85th observation? I had used a uh, this one over here in the chat uh, okay. for uh, oh, after dropping, but then I was looking at uh, like a solution book of another person and uh, there is a more, I don't know if to say elegant, but maybe let's convert some on the syntax way okay. to do it. Uh, and looking at, I'm going to look it right now and I will pass it on, okay. but that was okay. the way that I did it. Hmm. Yeah, because like looking looking at the book or like the labs, I'm wondering if they wanted me to do like there was like the whole idea of like indexing and like slicing, but yeah, I couldn't fully wrap my head around it quite. I'm not the best programmer, I will say. <laughs> I study statistics, not computer science. <laughs> um but yeah, but I could try. Would you suggest trying this, or do you have the, if you have the other code? I can run that. Okay. Okay, that's the other one that I found. Okay. And uh, I also share the page. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So this would be. I do. Okay. Let me try this. Oh, that did not, that did not like that. Oh, let's see. I'm guessing it should be. Let's see. Yeah, so it was 322. I forgot how big it was originally, like 296. But yeah, that should have dropped like 75 rows. Um, let me just copy that. Mm. Oh, not what I wanted to do. Okay, so yeah, so here it has like, this is actually the original, the numbers for the original. So I'm gonna run this. Um, okay, so with the subsated data, the min of miles per gallon is 11 and the max is 46.6. I think 46.6 was the one we had before. And then for the mean and standard deviation, oh, sorry, mean and standard deviation of the miles per gallon of the subset sub data, it's 24.4 and the yeah, standard deviation is 7.9. Uh, let me see, I should be able to go back, see what the difference is. Yeah, so that one where the range Originally it was like nine to six, and now, yeah, so it went from 11 to 46.6. And yeah, so it changed that one as well. Um, changed standard deviation. And... So that worked. Thank you so much, Lucia. Um, so I'm probably not gonna read all of it because it's basically as far as finding the um, finding the range mean standard deviation of 
of like each of them, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same um, code, lines of code, but just using this new data frame, um, which is using auto underscore new, where I'm setting that where auto dot drop and auto dot index um, 10, 10 through 85. So yeah, again, thank you, Lucia, for that code. And let's see. So then with the full thing. And yeah, so E again was like doing some stuff graphically, which I couldn't get to work. So I did not do, but with that one, we would have used the full data set to investigate the predictors graphically using scatter plots or other tools of our choice um, and creating some plots highlighting the relationship among the predictors. Um, and then yeah, and then F, which was suppose that we wish to predict mouse scale on the basis of other variables. Your your plot suggests that any other variables might be useful in predicting MPG. So yeah, I couldn't get any of the plots done, but that's what I have for now. Um, I also was not able to read in the Boston data, so it actually comes from the package rather than a CSV. I don't know. I know I asked Lucio, do you have, do you know how we do this in our studio? <laughs> uh, yeah, in, I think in the next chapter, they describe how to load data sets uh, from oh. the ISLP package. For example, hmm. this bit of code, uh, hmm. they show it. Uh, it should work. However, after I install the ISLP package using pip, pip install, uh, I don't know, oh. it didn't work for me. Like uh, it, the ISLP module is still not rec recognized in my machine. But oh. that is the code in the lab. So I, I, I suppose that it should work for other people maybe. Okay. Um, Lydia. Mm -hmm. uh, Ricardo here. Uh, one yes. thing that you could explore, you know, for mm -hmm. doing the uh the 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 plots you know the charts mm -hmm. is uh i i, I would recommend seaborn okay mm -hmm. uh seaborn because you know it's just one code you know uh function to get most of the most of the you know the the the, the type of plots that the exercise are are asking mm -hmm. uh there's another one okay but it's got you know th this one uh maybe book helps or maybe not <laughs> okay mm. uh there's mm. another library in python called plot nine mm. okay uh plot nine uh is uh it's kind of a port uh of ggplot yeah uh, to python okay so oh, yeah. you know how to do uh you know uh graphs and charts in ggplot uh, mm -hmm. Plot nine should be very, 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 very familiar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I started using it when I was learning this, but then, you know, I said, Hey, you know, I, I should learn more, you know, about, you know, how people in Python, you know, uh, used to work, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get it from the, from, from, from as a first start. So that's why, you yeah. know, I, I learned more Seaborn, uh, or of course, Matplotlib, but Matplotlib is still, you know, a little bit, uh, cumbersome and then also another library that you can check is uh plotly okay mm -hmm. yeah for doing interactive charts that's you know the gold standard in python for for interactive charts okay yeah but i, I recommend that you could try uh seaboard and i don't think you will have that that problem with uh charts not sh not showing you know in the in your you know in your in your uh notebook okay yeah I have to try that out. By the way, Ricardo, do you know yes. if the yes. the efficiency or, or or like how how fast are the plots created? If there is quite a big difference between Matplotlib, a uh, Seaborn, and Plot Nine, because when I have tried to work right. with Plot Nine, in, uh, <laughs> mostly because I was lazy to learn uh -huh. another way to do it in Python. Right. Uh, it, it took a while when I tried to do it. Uh, for Matplotlib, it was faster, yeah, uh -huh. 
-hmm. but the syntax is very ugly. So I, I do All want right. to learn the Seaborn library, but I, yeah. I know if it is also quite as fast as Matplotlib. I, I I think you're right. You know, I uh I you know I haven't used Plotline in a while. Okay, you know, uh, if 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 I'm working in Python, I usually use Seaborn, uh, Matplotlib. If there's you know if there's not a plot that Seaborn has, which you know, usually that they do, and then you know, plotly, okay, to do the interactive charts. And you're right, uh, plot line is a little bit slow, okay. Uh, Matplotlib is you know Python created, so it's you know it's native. And the good thing about Seaborn is that Seaborn is kind of a wrapper uh, for Matplotlib, so he's using Matplotlib internally, you know, to get the the graphs. So. Uh, between Seaborn and Matplotlib, I don't think you you see that much difference in terms of performance. But yeah, you're right. Uh, Plotline is a little bit slow. Yes, <laughs> especially when you have you know a, a lot of a lot of rows. You know, a, 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 a big uh, data set. Yeah, it is. <laughs> good. Uh, you know, good, 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 good comment there. Good question. Well. Uh, let, let me tell you, yeah. Plotly, so far, Plotly for me is one of the, you know, also is 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 has a good performance too, okay? Because it's also, you know, uh, built in, in Python too. I think Plotly is also a wrapper for the JavaScript library. Uh, yeah, it's in, yeah. Is it the, is Java or JavaScript? I don't remember. Uh, JavaScript. JavaScript, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a wrapper for JavaScript, yes. Yeah, that, that's why you can, you know, use the HTML, um, you know, get the graphs there and they're, they're interactive. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to look in the C1. I did like a one hour, well, I attended like a one hour webinar. It wasn't like you do things along, but yeah, I'm going to look into it. I like database, <laughs> so I'll definitely look into that more. But yeah, so I guess that's it for today. I can like continue working on these and if we have extra time next week, maybe I can go over them. But either way, I'm gonna send what I have to the repo um, so you guys can look it over. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. I appreciate all of your help. Yeah, th thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ricardo. I also learned a lot uh, yeah. about Python in this. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're always learning something new, you know, with Python. Yeah. yeah at R too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we'll get great, 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 you know, uh, great exposition and great effort, Lydia. You know, don't. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't feel, you know, that, you know, th things didn't happen. Usually yeah. I learn more from the mistakes and some of the, the obstacles that we counter than, you know, when everything goes right. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Okay. I'll see you next week. All right. Sure. Bye.